Hey, what's up? My name is Holly. Today I am back in my kitchen to work with what I have claimed is my favorite spirit for quite some time. We are working with gin in the kitchen. I picked out three different gin cocktail recipes. The first will be the easiest, second medium, and then third will be the harder level. So we shall see. I tried to follow these recipe ingredients as closely as possible. The one thing I'm missing, I believe, is a vegan Worcestershire sauce and fresh mint, but we will just have to make do. Whenever I try one of the drinks, I'm gonna try to share with you a quick spitfire fact about gin, because again, I've been going all around town telling people it's my favorite drink just because I like it with jam, when in reality, I have no idea what gin really even is. So the author of this recipe has it entitled on her blog, My Kind of Spring Drink Recipe, Strawberry Gin Smash. And although if you are definitely into fall now, I'm super into the idea of having some fresh strawberries, which I never treat myself to, so. Are you like that too? Do you never buy fresh fruit? Cause you, know you could get it frozen and it'll be just as good. Ugh. Honestly, like a luxury in my life. First thing is to have a glass. I really don't want to do you dirty with glasses that aren't completely clear, but when I tried to go by the thrift store to get some plain glasses, they had different hours because of reasons, as you know. We need half a teaspoon of sugar. I would try to replace this with something like coconut sugar, but I'm treating myself to the actual recipe tried and true right now, which I'm so excited about because I know it. It probably wouldn't be as good if it were coconut sugar, but you could do that if you wanted. Oh, we need a lime. I have so many limes that yield so little juice. Oh, look at her. Have we ever seen such a sight? I don't think so. And just says a little bit of juice from the lemon. Oh my God, no juice, I swear, in this batch. And then half teaspoon of that sugar. Oh, okay, so we're trying to dissolve the sugar. I guess we could try that. This isn't how it looks at the bar. So how are they doing it? If you're a barista, how do you dissolve sugar in cups? Let me know, comment down below. Okay, now we get to add the strawberries, the coveted strawberries. I'm gonna go with you, I'm gonna go with you, I'm gonna go with you. Oh yes, like there's something about this. Mental note to add that song in. Did you, did you add it in, Holly? Did you add it in? Oh my god, this looks so good. Now we just add ice. I can't prepare to this. I filled my one and only ice cube tray. All we need now is a splash of club soda and three ounces of gin. See, it sounds like a lot. If you watched the last time, I used a gin that I was trying to get through and I didn't want to use it again because I wanted these recipes to be really good. I didn't want to settle. Don't settle in life if you can help it. I went back and I got the gin that I know that I got once before that I really liked. And the only quality of this gin that I was sure of is that it's organic. Re again, I just wanted to pick something that sounded as ethical as possible because I don't know anything about it. But I'm willing to bet that the reason I like it after looking just a little bit into gin is that it might be distilled more times than other gin, just a guess. Are you excited for the real fact? What's gonna come next? Cheers to this because if it's good, it'll be like the first good gin mixed drink I've ever made, so. Ah, did you know that there are three different types of gin? There's London Dry, which follows strict regulations and is only flavored through botanicals through the distillery process, I think. The second type is distilled gin, which is what I think this is, maybe. It has the same production as London gin, but you're allowed to add flavors in. What's the difference then? And the last is compounded gin, which does not require distillation. Okay, so I'm thinking the one over here, that's a compound most likely. I don't, it's super, super strong, I hate it. And there are no added flavors. So I'm trying to figure this out for us. I'm trying to put the puzzle together. Okay, here. Nope, nope. But it is local to Dallas, which is what I look for is organic and local. Okay, CBD on this one. Don't buy this. <laughs> Sorry, don't mean to hate on Dallas, but if, if the place you're from 
it has a bad reputation. They also have bad gin. Do you ever need to go back? <laughs> Hashtag just Austin transplant things. But I think the most important part of a drink like this is that you get to eat the strawberries. You get to bite into the strawberry as you drink it. It's essentially a chaser. Done. We will move on to number two. So for this one, you need a shaker, jam, lemon, and gin. So I think this is one of those drinks where you might think you don't have what you need, and you probably do. I went with a blueberry fruit spread because I knew if I wanted to top this off later with a sparkling beverage that it would go with my blueberry sparkling water. Don't be mad, but I got juice lemon because these limes that I got recently, I got a huge bag of limes and they are not yielding any juice. So I couldn't bear the disappointment. Oh, this is really easy. You just add all the ingredients to the shaker and then you shake. Which, if you saw the, the video I did about fall, when I use this shaker, the liquid starts to come out. And I'm wondering if I if my shaker's broken because I got it from Goodwill and I forgot to check the mug for spiders. Always check your mugs for spiders before you use them. Anyway, when I shake this up, if it leaks, I won't be surprised. Okay, now we're putting in a tablespoon of lemon juice and that's going with two ounces of gin and the secret ingredient, the not so secret ingredient is jam, which I'm so hyped about. I love jam so much. I'm gonna cover my whole body in jam. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Only one tablespoon. Okay, well, if you like the way it tastes with lots of jam and you mix it and you're disappointed, just add more jam. No one's gonna, the jam police are not even cut it and pull you over. There's something about having a drink that really loosens me up, you know what I mean? I'm just so much happier. Oh no. Alcoholism who? Okay. Damn, that gin was strong. Gin is also quite a strong drink. It's 40%, I believe. How much is wine again? Because that's what I've been trying to drink lately. I'm trying to drink the low carb stuff. So again, baristas. Am I sealing it correctly? Am I missing something? It seems like this is all I need to do. I'm holding on tight. See? It's not exploding. I don't know what happened last time. It looks so cool inside, all the jam burst up. This is a goblet that uh, Antique Store was trying to get rid of on their <laughs> sidewalk. <laughs> and I picked it up late at night um, when they left it out there. So they were giving it away for free. And I was like, who didn't want this baby for free? <laughs> Come on guys, you're missing out. It's kind of a small serving. Look at that cast. Here we go, cheers. Mm. Oh my god, that's so good. Popular gin botanicals include coriander, orris root, licorice, yes, licorice, cassia, and lemon peel. And then also hot spices like peppercorn and basil. Oh, it's a spicy liver that sounds so good. And so far, this drink is winning. Oh my god, it is so good. I'm telling you, if you make this, wow, Ooh. strong. You won't think you're making, you won't think you're drinking jam, you'll just be drinking a sweet berry drink, so. All right, so the last drink on my list, which will hopefully steal the show and is also the highest in difficulty, is the Red Snapper Cocktail. And another th quick tip I learned is that if you don't want things to get watered down, you should chill your ingredients ahead of time, which means I have tomato juice and I put my gin in the fridge. Ooh, this seems like a problem. Like this can't just, this cannot be for one drink. Is it for one drink? It's a big drink. It's for four drinks. So I have a choice has to be made. I guess I just go for it and then I, I consider if I like it, I drink it later. And if I don't, it's not a huge loss, right? I'm really nervous. I don't even know if all the ingredients are gonna fit in my shaker. Two cups of tomato juice. Do you know Mater from Cars? Oh my God, that's this is like the whole bottle of tomato juice. But it's like, was I gonna drink it anyway? No. Okay. And again, like this doesn't look good. Oh 
hold up, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Oh my god. It's like at the rim. We are in for a scary game. Oh no, one fourth cup of lemon juice? Oh my god, it's gonna overflow. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Okay. Just like that, I've squeezed a bunch of lemons. Okay, now we're adding in the funky ingredients. We're gonna replace Worcestershire sauce for soy sauce. Next weird ingredient is horseradish. If you are a Bloody Mary fan, these ingredients probably aren't that weird to you, but as someone who's only made bad versions of this, like they always come out poorly for me, they're still weird ingredients. Here's where I had to do my best. This is a horseradish mustard. God, I hope it works. Here we go. It's just like the idea of eating mustard ain't so hot, you know? And here's something I didn't have either. Do you know they sell Tabasco in a box? And then this is just a half teaspoon. A half teaspoon of salt and pepper going in. Again, <laughs> I love my fun glassware. These are some pretty jade pieces. And I'm looking for the matching lemon juicer. How ironic. And I think just in general, there are a lot of nice like this type of glass that I would love more of. We're up to 34 minutes. How you been? What's it been for you? Maybe like 16 minutes? 12 minutes if I did my job right? I'm still reeling from my last roach attack, so going to that cabinet was a pretty big victory just now. If you live somewhere where you don't encounter flying roaches, could you tell me? Could you comment so I can move there, please? And this will be a little explosive, I'm sure, so. I'm sorry if that was abrupt, but this whole iPhone storage thing isn't working out for me and I just don't know what has happened to my footage. So I stepped out for a bit, I took my dog on a walk, and I'm still drinking this. I have another pickle garnish to enjoy. And let's just say, this drink steals the show out of all of the drinks that I made today. I'm gonna definitely finish that picture that I thought was initially too much for me. I think I'll be able to finish it. But I didn't wanna leave you hanging. I had one final fact that when I filmed it the first time, I thought, oh my God, this is too good not to share. We're on photo booth, by the way. And the fact is, the country with the world's highest gin consumption is the Philippines, with an estimated 25 million cases consumed annually. Can you believe? That honestly sounds kinda of low. I'm feeling when you enjoy the salt more than you enjoy the drink. Anyway. Thank you so much for coming along this gin journey. If you like it, make sure to sub it, give it a like, a thumbs up if you want more drinks, more content on my dog, whatever you want, you comment, you decide. And then if I don't get a comment, I decide. So cheers to you. I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're doing good. See you back here soon.